waiting on the vegan teacher. She's lost, back roads you can see. We're in rural Texas. And uh, so I somehow got her down here. I got her to come to Texas from Canada. She just like lives in Montreal or something like that. I don't know why she agreed to come. I'm not gonna like expose her or troll her or whatever. I just think it'd be funny if we just kind of hung out for a few days. And I uh, got to see maybe what she's all about. Yes, this video is real. Yes, that is me. And yes, that is my aunt. That vegan teacher. Miss Katie. What would you like me to call you? Miss Katie. Miss Katie. Okay. Um, I get comfy here. A lot of people think you're my aunt. Well, I am. You do feel like family, I'll be honest. Over yeah. the last couple days. Very much so. It's good. Is that her? That is her. Oh my god, dude. You all know this woman. She's been around. She's a pariah on the internet. She's hated and talked down upon by almost every single YouTube commentator. I hate Umbaville. I hate him. We've even had a bit of a back and forth over the last few years. But in spite of all that, I tried reaching out to her and creating a situation in which she would feel comfortable enough to come to me and we could sit down and talk in person. And by God, I did it! How's it going? It's pretty good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. You look well. way prettier in real life. Thank you. Do you like my beautiful hair? I do. And I like your cloak. It's very cult-like. You are in a cult. And yeah, you uh, you said that uh, you weren't sure where I lived, and I didn't give you the exact address. I gave you a coordinate. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty forgiving. I've been walking for about six kilometers, okay. but you know, walking's good. Yeah. Um, so it was, I'm happy to see you. The terms of our agreement are as such. A. I would not be rude. I would be nice. B. I would be not vegan by accident for the time that she was there. Out of respect, obviously. I'm not going to eat a steak while she's sitting at my dinner table. C. I wouldn't expose her or leak any private information. And another thing that I promised her is that I would let you guys educate yourselves if you wanted to become vegan. So below, I'll link the vegan teacher's channel, her TikTok, and two documentaries, and then a video that I found the most interesting. You guys can educate yourselves if you want and make your own decisions. I'm just here to make you all laugh, hopefully, and entertain. If everyone can see your shirt, Caleb. True. It's very important this that was they a gift. do. This was a gift. This was a gift. This is my tofu hunting shirt. I wear it with pride. I tried tofu for the first time with you. Yeah. Well, you we cooked some. You mm -hmm. cooked some in an absolutely horrific way. What is this? Hi. Is it like is you you cook it like I, you sear it? Um, I don't. I just like don't know. What is it? Soy. Yeah. Soybeans. It smells like wet monkey scalp. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been making videos? What kind? I mean, just like... Just in general. Okay, How long have you so, been creating content? Well, it all started with my kids. Back in the camcorder days, I filmed them constantly because I found them to be fascinating. And just keeping the camera there and trying not to intervene. I feel like it's a very normal thing to film your kids. I, I think my parents filmed me a lot when I was an infant. I always wanted to be the center of attention. Yeah. You couldn't tell. Kind of assumed that. I rushed and hid all the meat in my entire house in a small hole in the backyard, and we went to the we went to Walmart and we bought you some stuff. I thought you might like. This is from our home. This is this is a southern dish. Southern vegans eat these. It's called boiled peanuts. You ever had a boiled peanut? No, but if they're, they're vegan, disgusting. you know what that means. Okay, so yeah. Oh, what? What the hell what? is that? Peanuts. What do you mean peanut? Wait, Sorry. what? Peanuts. No. <laughs> that. It's a peanut. But they have the shells on them. Yeah, they're boiled peanuts. I'll show you how to eat them. Here, look. What? Make the TikTok, make the TikTok. When did you become vegan? Okay, so first I was vegetarian for a long time, not really kind of cluing in or realizing. Right. And uh, that it was wrong. And then I, when I became vegan, I started to do content just on Facebook. Most people who become vegetarian or vegan have that moment where they are just kind of shocked about what's going on, like the degree when you really right. watch the slaughter. And then they just assume that they're going to tell everyone and everyone's going to have the same reaction as them. And then they're just like devastated and shocked. This is what yeah. all the teenagers tell me. Like, I found out what happened. I'm going to tell my mom and dad right away. We all have to be vegan. And I'm like, <laughs> but I always think about the kids and, and uh, the teenagers coming out 
I say, coming out of the closet as a vegan. Mm -hmm. And I even argue that it can be more difficult to come out of the closet as a as vegan. A vegan than and a, people hate that. A gay that. person? People hate that. But the reality is that many people come out of the closet as gay, lesbian, trans, nowadays, mm -hmm. nobody gives a shit. It's like, okay, whatever, that's fine. The internet does not like it when you say that. All right, so also I realized that I forgot the, the key to my gate to get in my property, so we're gonna have to climb the fence. Climb the fence? Yeah. Do you know how old I am? I'm 58, you yeah, didn't make me do acrobatics now? London Bridge is falling down, falling down, yes. falling down. She's forcing us to do this, she's forcing us to do this. falling down, yay, yay, Caleb. Sorry to break your immersion, but there's two more hours of this, basically, that I'm kind of afraid to even upload to YouTube. If you guys really want to see them, I can try to post them as like a part two or something. Press the like. There you go. All right, now we're going to get all the uh, all right. the equipment out. Who wants to carry this? Oh, Tex wants to carry this a bit. Oh, Tex. This is your gift, remember? Yes, sir. Nice raffle. My big old front flap's kind of hard to get over this fence. I hate my front flap. What do you think of Texas so far? I, I think that Texas has a lot of gas stations, a lot of open places, and a lot of schmernered people. What's schmernered mean? Am I schmernered? Uh, occasionally, yeah. When you have that look like no expression, like you just don't know which way to expect that. What about if I get real close to the camera and I, and I give him a thousand yard stare? That's the one. Every time I've ever even not gone hard or said anything rude or been like, you know, ex outwardly trying to make fun, people were like, don't you know she's a homophobe, a transphobe, and a racist? I don't think I'm racist. In fact, I will argue that everyone who eats meat is racist. They are racist towards the animals. They point at one being and they right. say, you are a piece of shit, I'm gonna eat you, and you, oh, I like you, you're gonna come mm -hmm. into my house, I'm gonna take care of you. Complete opposites. Right. I do that. Yeah. Actively. Yeah, and you're a piece of shit for it. She's still on that thing over there? What a, what a, what a absurd, surreal experience this is. We've been trying really hard. I've been eating so much Chick-fil-A lately that it's like hard to break the habit now already. And like, she's here, so I can't, I gotta quit. We force you to eat boiled peanuts. A little southern vegan delicacy. <laughs> Were they good? This is, guys, these, this you gotta heat them up first. Did you, before oh, you eat them. But they're hard as well. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to heat them up so they soften up. Oh. Yeah. Boiled peanuts. It's a southern delicatessen. 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 The inside was fine. I mean, I just, it's sort of weird. You open a can of peanuts and they have shells on them. It's like, what? Weird, you want me yeah. to work? Here, I made you a delicious meal. It looks so good. I can't wait to try this. I made you a sucking of peanuts. It is peanuts. <laughs> It is peanuts that have the handle, the foreskin on them still. <laughs> Poor people from the south made that up. And did they? But did they eat the shells? I don't know, to be honest. See, we don't know. Because I'm don't thinking, know. I'm thinking, you know, like you can eat the kiwi on the outside. A lot of right. people don't know the that. Harry, like, the hairy like balls. Yeah. The hairy, yeah. Scrotum. Oh god, you the just, kiwi scrotum. Yeah. This is a sig. This is a sig. Uh, is that named after Freud or something? Or yeah, it's a Sigmund Freud. This okay. is a Sigmund Freud. Okay. It's a B and T, which is named after. It's actually now called Truist. It's a banking. Uh, it's a bank. This is a Henry. Okay. Model X in thirty thirty, and this one <laughs> actually is one that I got for you. Well, okay. Thank so, you. I wanted to draw something about uh, go vegan from now on. I think. Yeah. On it, but I couldn't find a marker. Okay, yeah. So we're trying to like shoot this thing right over there, that big, that big thing you built? No, no, that's, that's a trebuchet, that's secret. Oh. We're shooting this piece of dirt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you, did you bring any pictures of Gordon Ramsay? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh. Now, I mentioned to you that I, I would love to drink breast milk. You've already had it before, no? Yes, Never? I have. Yes. Okay, so, yeah. so ask I was a late, I, I stopped when I was like 11. Okay. Just kidding, right. that's a joke. I would drink it now, though, is what I'm saying. If they had Ask human... your mom. She's, she's not... I don't, I don't believe my mom is lactating. Okay, so, you know, you're full of shit. There's no way. Your mother... Okay, if your mom, for some reason... How old is she? Uh, 57. Okay, whatever. So let's say she's 40. Let's say she's in her 40s. She has another kid. You'd be like, Mom, I'd really like to taste your, bla your breast milk. Is that okay? You'd really... You'd just go ahead and just, you know, on a regular basis. Just, hey, give me a shot, Mom. Mm -hmm. like, why? Why not? Why? Why wouldn't I?
Okay, well, when you're, when you're married and you have a wife and she has a baby, you can go ahead and experiment then if I you will. want. I'm I sure she'll be fine. Will. And that will be vegan because it's consensual. You mentioned that you had death threats, etc., yeah. which is pretty sad. Yeah. Honestly, I don't want to see anyone be hated by anyone really necessarily, unless they do something abhorrently evil or wrong, which I don't think you've done anything abhorrently evil or wrong. Um, so you don't deserve death threats, and uh, you probably don't know how to defend yourself because you're Canadian and also vegan. <laughs> That's like two stereotypes. <laughs> what <Yeah>. do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> It's always a good skill to learn. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like I say, no when in doubt, check it out. If you're not sure, go for the new experience. When in doubt, check it out. I'm about to uh, fire this weapon. Yeah, and I'm taking that back to Canada with me, right? It's cool to go over the border uh, with it. Yeah, uh, I think it should be fine, right? You it's should pink, be able to. So they'll, they'll never. Yeah, yeah, if it's pink. Let's talk about the kit you got on this thing. And also, yeah. So, so basically, it's a pink weapon. Right? It's pink. It is now loaded, so I don't want to point it at my best friend. Oh, yep. But this is a uh, suppressor. All right, so this will make it quiet. Yeah. Well, these are interesting because you can see the bullets. Yeah, those are uh, more educational. Right, okay. Because you can see through the bullets. Yeah, you can. I guess that's how you teach kids to count here in Texas. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so ready? This is, this is firing. Oh, wow, that was not very noisy. No. No, really, it's pretty quiet. Would you like to shoot it? That was so scary how, like, not scary that was. Yeah. Do you find it difficult to create allies in the LGBTQ community? Well, first of all, you know I'm a member. Did you know that? I did not know that. Okay, so I'm bisexual, okay. possibly pansexual, I don't know. And it's not really something that I explore further now because I'm married, mm -hmm. I'm in a monogamous relationship, and I'm fine with that. When I was younger, I always knew from the time, like my very first crush that I ever remember was when I was five years old in kindergarten, and there was this little girl named Natalie, mm -hmm. and she was so cute. And I just remember always wanting to just kind of like Snuggle up to her. Now, of course, there's no sexuality involved, right? But there's You're this. Five. But then there was a kid in grade four. His name was Pierre, and he was so cute. And I would, I thought, you know. How, are you, how old are you in grade four? I think it was nine. And I was, you know, so you're still not mature, but you mm -hmm. still know. Yeah. Like, did you have a crush on girls when you were younger? Like, in I had a crush on a kid named Pierre in grade four. <laughs> right. I was homeschooled. Oh <laughs> let's, let's face it. I was, you know, I did, I did go to the gay bars as a young lady mm -hmm. to try to figure stuff out. And I sort of realized that I, I liked women, mm -hmm. but not necessarily those ones that were so tough and rough and right. I, I played ball hockey for a while and there was a lot of lesbians who were kind of mean honestly so it kind of turned me off even though I, I just was in the wrong crowd you know I was like where are the nice lesbians who are sweet and not wanting not so tough so I couldn't find them so I'm like you know I found a guy who was nice right. and you know so that's how it worked out for me is scissoring real um, um let's talk about the animals okay and let's just first make sure that everybody reads my message here, which says, uh, yeah, right there. There you go. If you're not vegan, you're paying for animal abuse. So do not shoot animals with guns. Guns are only meant for people. And the legs are, I can just rest it on the legs if I want to. Yeah, like you, you, could, you could just bend, bend down a little bit and then sit on the yeah. legs like this. And then what do you think about Alex Baldwin? The fact that, that the, the woman, fact that he murdered a woman? Okay, that says it all, yeah. Yeah. I just don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying. Neither do I. I'm, you know, I'm trying stuff. I'm confused as shit. <laughs> you know? Genuinely. Every day. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Really? Yeah, for sure. I wake up and I'm like, ah! That's what I do. <laughs> Look, you know oh, what? Oh, again! <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Look, you know what? I was never a smart kid in school and somehow I ended up being a nurse in an intensive care unit mm -hmm. and had a person there who was just on life support, barely alive on a, on a, on a ventilator and, and with a swan gans catheter in their heart and had to do all these tests, art, arterial lines, and, every, and I was it. Every, yeah. every time I go in there, I'd be like, how the fuck did I end up here? Like, I'm not smart enough. Like that imposter, yeah, that. Si imposter right. syn syndrome. Right. It's like, I don't, I'm not smart enough to be here. I'm not good enough to be here. Why am I here in front of this camera and these lights? Like, it should be someone better, some, a better spoken person, someone smarter, someone- Taller. Who, taller, yeah, too. Yeah. With, that's that's with what a, I feel a lot. With a better nose and not a cold sore, you know? Like, maybe an, a cute nose. Like, you have a nice nose. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's, see, and that's another thing too. You mentioned you'd like to have fun. You are very fun. You do ha like to have a lot of fun. And also you have so much fucking energy. <laughs>
That it, it's almost infuriating because I'm like, I'm 26, you're f what, two, three hundred? Well, I have to admit, it's 399. <laughs> Yeah, the kids are always saying that. I'm like, I look pretty good, eh, for 98? You genuinely do. <laughs> no. <laughs> for the crypt keeper. No, no, no. Now, how do you know that there's not just like a random squirrel there? Well, you don't. What? I'm not shooting. I'm going to pretend. Hey, hey, squirrel. No, I'm shoot, not sh no, shoot. You know what? I never thought of that before. No, I could be just innocently shooting like an, an ant or something. Um, Who's just like minding their own business. Yeah, probably. Can I go over there and check? Sure. Yeah. I'm thinking it's a calculated risk. Okay. Oh, wow. Can we do that again? Uh, yeah, I'll have to reload it. <sighs> oh, did I hurt you? Yeah, my balls hurt. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How, how, wait, how, why, how, does his, how big are his balls? They're hanging on the ground. Like, why? why it runs in the family. Why did that hurt your balls? I'm from Appalachia. So, next, we'll shoot a pistol. Okay. Are you aware of pistols? Yeah. They're illegal in Canada now. Is it a 509C? Mm hmm Okay, this is my carry weapon, so I'll show you. This is how you shoot it. Okay. Point. Aim. Slow to pull the trigger. What the hell just flew back? That could have hit us in the head. That was a, that was a casing of a bullet. That could have hit him. He'd have been all right. A lot of people are just going to be mad at me for even having you here. Like, they were mad at me for interviewing Andrew Tate. They were mad at me for having Nick over. They've been mad, like people just get mad for no reason. And they don't want to hear what you have to say. They don't want to hear anything that is outside like what you're saying. They want to be the big fish in the little pond. Everyone does, like that's nat like you're naturally inclined. So it, it's a very impressive that you have the, the inclination to, to willingly be is like- it, Are people like that they, though? They, they all want to be the big fish. They want to be accepted and they want to have path, path, path of least resistance. There's a reason we have like uh, an obesity crisis and things like that, because life is very easy. And people want life to remain very, very, very easy. Um, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> people, <laughs> you people, you can all suck it. <laughs> Do you think that these statements that you've made that we just covered, like the, 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 the transphobia, the homophobia, the, the racism, uh, do you think those are the reasons you've gotten banned, or do you think it's like mass reporting or? It's everything. Just everything. It's a mass misunderstanding, mass ignorance. People cannot read between the lines. They can't. They can't understand. They got poop in their ass. I don't know. They're constipated. I, maybe. They're intellectually constipated. Eat some fiber. This is a Sig 5.53. It shoots uh, 300 blackout. That seems scary. That one's scary. Didn't it? Let's be here in the middle of the night and you know some animal just dropped dead. This would be in TAPC. You want one? Yeah. Ready? Go! This one's gonna be pretty quiet. Would you like to shoot this one? Okay, this one's on safe. Fire when ready. Okay. If there's any squirrels, time to run away! One, two, three. Oh my God, that was fine. That, that that's, was, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem as scary. I don't know why, it's bigger. When you think of it from the perspective that there's an explosion going on in it, you want more mass. Okay, but I, I don't like the fact that it goes backwards. Yeah. I just have to be ready. Yeah, it's making me nervous. And I farted. That's not the goal of this, by the way, is to have a hate brigade. I feel like uh, I've done a good job so far of not like trying to instigate anything. And I'm gonna hopefully continue that. You said you watched my Salt Bay video and I mentioned beef or something like that. I forget exactly how it would happen, but oh. you tweeted me and then all these people were just like, just sending, just so many videos of just, just, just uh, trolls yeah. sending you stuff. The fact that so many of you made it so much worse. Like, I'm not exaggerating if I say, I believe that people have committed <laughs> because of those actions because I know that kids, teenagers, have written to me how devastated they've been, and I've had some very close to me on Instagram, like, like writing to me all the time, who just completely disappeared. And I think about them now, because they found it, they said it's just so hard, they're getting bullied, and their parents don't understand, and they just can't believe how terrible the world is. And that 
really keeps me up at night. These big stars when they make fun of me. Initially, yeah, it was like, why are people attacking me? But, you know, I'm a big girl. I can like duck out of the way and I can, you know, I can carry on. How do you feel being a sort of pariah of the internet at this point? Like you mentioned Gordon Ramsay, Call Me Chris, so many people, Daz Games, so many people have made videos just going at you. Like it's like a literal punching bag. How I you, think like, that, I think at this point, it's sort of, I've, I've accepted it, I think. What's sad is that when I do approach somebody new, I don't want to be prejudicial, pre prejudicial but I find that I am so used to the negativity mm -hmm. from the ben, ben of the Week, all these people that immediately attack, that I go into and I always have to remind myself, this person might be different. This time, when I talk to the person, maybe they'll be kind. Right. Like, there is no excuse for people like Call Me Chris and Sniper Wolf to continue to talk about the animals and to, uh, 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 to just eat them, I mean, just promote them or, or say right. anything about They should immediately have said, and Gordon Ramsay too, and so should you, all of you should have said, she is on, she's trying to do the right thing, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with being vegan, and we should all be attempting to head that way. I will say you are the most honest vegan I've ever met in my entire life. I've met a lot of vegans, and most all of them, it was just a phase that they went through. Pretty much all of them. It was just a phase that they went through when they were like, whatever, trying to, uh, I don't know, they, they use it as like a form of identity. You are by, you know, no standard, the most vegan person I've ever met in my entire life. And the most responsible and respectable version of that as well, in real life, especially. I feel like a lot of what you like are as a character from what I've learned over the last couple of days is kind of lost on TikTok and the short form stuff. And it's so easy for, for people to just read a comment and then their entire perspective of what you're saying is, is gonna be changed. And I mean, a lot of the stuff that you do say is quite extreme. I mean, you're like, you, you're a self-proclaimed militant, which is good because you have to get things done and your, your idols and the people that you frame your philosophy on, like Gary Yurofsky, he's the same way. He, you can't cherry pick your isms, right? So you, you're like, it, it's impressive. What I'm, what I'm saying is it's very impressive that you are black and white. I'd like to see how, if there's any sort of change in the water over the next couple of years, when people, you know, maybe can just listen a little bit more because you're not, you're not evil, right? And by the way, I, you don't have to respond to any of that, but I wanted to circle back to what we said. You mentioned how it's more difficult for a vegan to come out of the closet than someone who is gay or uh, transphobic. That's like the biggest thing on the internet, in my opinion, that people, they latch onto that and hate you the most for it. Well, they're not really listening because I'm not talking about places like Iran or whatever, these, you know, when you're stuck in the middle of some family that's deeply right. religious. I mean, I'm talking about the vast majority of Canadians, Americans, mm -hmm. Australians, everyone who has a gay person in their class, I mean, or, you know, on their street or, or in their family. Mm -hmm. Nobody really cares. I mean, everyone I talk to says, that it is much more difficult to come out of the closet as a vegan, and here is why. Because when you come out of the closet as a vegan, you do not get a giant hug from anyone. You get, oh fuck, now what? What are we gonna do at Thanksgiving? You're gonna ruin Thanksgiving. You're gonna ruin every single event from now on. Hopefully this is just a phase. Mm -hmm. That's what they always say, and hope. And what does the kid get? You have to be such a brave person to be vegan. If you're a teenager, a kid, a young person, I mean, even an adult in, at the workplace, right. you know, you have a boss who's vegan phobic and vegan phobic, it means it's like racism towards vegans. It's like homophobia. It's like the same in the same category. People right. freak out when I say that. But if you have lived in my shoes and listened to the people that I work with, that is what it's like. Right. What would you say to people that were to say that v being a vegan is like a choice and the other things are not a choice? Because you can't be, choose to be born in a specific part of the world. Well, so, you know, I say that you're born vegan. Mm -hmm. I say that, and that is some, a concept it, that I came up with. If on that's my, what you believe, and then, then we can just move on. That's fine. Right. I think, yeah. well, I think that you were born vegan in the sense okay. that you, don't you're born anyone. innocent. You don't right. want to harm anyone. And, okay. and you are, in the same way that you're taught racism, you're taught speciesism, which is the first form of racism. You are taught that by your parents. Okay. That animal, you can step on, that little worm, that little mm -hmm. whatever, and this one is, you know, much more valuable. Right. And I think it's bullshit. I mean, there's a certain extent to it when, like when we were talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson, who, who talked about, well, what about the mosquitoes or the lice or some bullshit? I don't know what he's talking about. It's like, it's different if the what animal, the, mosquitoes? the animal or the insect is attacking you. That right. is where you draw the line. If you start attacking me, I'll right. punch you back. If a mosquito comes and attacks me, I'll do the same. You swat it. 
right? Punch I don't want to necessarily face. kill the mosquito because I see the innocence of the mosquito, but I'm not a freak. I'm not a militant that who's going to just, you know, try to carry out every single mosquito in my tent. Mm -hmm. It's like at some point it's like, okay, you know what? I asked you to leave. <laughs> I, yeah. I turned the light on out there. Right. Hope you didn't leave. Have you ever changed one of your stances online from backlash? It doesn't, I, I don't think you have. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that I feel like you haven't really changed your like fundamental ideas. The main one, the main one, like I said, is the comparing coming out as a vegan, which you've explained that. There's no need to keep jumping back into that. But that hasn't changed from the very beginning. You still firmly believe that, that is, those are all equal things. And you've explained why you believe those things are equal. And, you know, and that all babies are born vegan and that we right. should help to maintain their vegan said, yes. virginity, not to... Virginity, right? Yeah, not that, that's how it's a concept I came up with. You know, you have an orifice here that doesn't need, you don't need mm -hmm. to put any animal products inside. You could let your children decide when they're older. You can give them healthy vegan foods because right. you can be vegan from mm -hmm. the time that you're a baby all the way till the time that you're old. You just gotta be a little bit smart about it. Right. Just eat enough calories, enough variety, make sure you get lentils and some protein from plants, and you're fine. You say that to be able to, you think all gay people, everyone who falls under the, that acronym should be vegan as well. Well, everyone should be, but Just in general. especially people who, especially those as, people. hold on, especially people who claim to be victims, Okay. right? They're victimized. I'm oppressed, they say. You're oppressed. I mean, this is what happened um, at the time of George Floyd's death. Mm -hmm. A dark-skinned man was carrying around the head, an actual head of a pig, all right, and saying, we hate the pig, implying right, the that's the cops, right? right I see but an actual debt. And I, I was just like, this is unacceptable. It doesn't matter that the fact that the guy is, get, is, is black doesn't mean he's off limits now. And my community said, no, 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 no. Don't start with the all lives matter now. No, no, no. And they shoved me deep into a corner, and I got blocked tremendously. That makes sense. Right? Not to me. Right. Not to me. Because you're hard. You're hard. No, you're because hard I'm vegan. not. Because I'm not prejudiced. That's why. Do you understand that? I feel like that falls in line with the militancy. All I was saying is that this is not okay. And there's an organization called Anonymous for the Voiceless right. who had who had a guy. I think I mentioned to you, Carnism debunked. His mm -hmm. name is George Martin, and he was working for them at the time. And he also said, "Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, we are against what happened to George. It was terrible." Mm -hmm. Any kind of brutality is wrong. Any kind of racism is wrong. But you don't get to play that card to, to walk around and parade around with a dead corpse on your head mm -hmm. and act like that's okay. A pig is not a cop. Right. I would agree. But you, like, see, so that, that's what I'm saying with the whole black and white thing is you don't really choose your battles. Outside, well, online you don't, at least. And yet... Okay, and yet, again, to, to respond to this black and white thing, it pissed me off what they were doing, but there's always, I'm not stupid in that sense, and I'm not bright in all kinds of areas. I'm not good at math. I was always an average That's student. Fair, yeah. I was an average right. student, you know? But if, if, if enough people are telling me, don't talk about that now, I did go back a bit and okay. reflect, and um, I thought, okay, you know, maybe I'm missing something. And I, I think I held back more than I would have liked to. Right. Okay. Because, more than you would have liked because, to. Well, because the, the issue is we want human rights and right. we want animal rights. And we, there, there's no reason for these groups to argue. Mm -hmm. So a lot of... See, what happened is here's how wimpy the vegans are. Okay? When that happened, it was... Everybody just dropped everything and said, we support black, all of us animal rights activists, we support Black Lives Matter. We support it. And they just said it over and over and over again. But do you know why they did that? Yes, they support it. But also they were hoping, you know what, they're going to see how we support them. And they're going to see then that they should be supporting us. And that's not what happened. Right. And I, I, could, and I, and, and I could see that. Right. Because it, there's so much hypocrisy. Yeah, because there's a lot of, there can be many different truths, right? Like something that isn't true, it, something that is true is not necessarily factual. It has some basis in what's right. That's what truth is. And then factual things are like based upon like statistics and logic, uh, you know, they're infallible. But truth. Like gravity, fact. Exactly, yeah. Gravity is a fact. I, I'm, let me follow you though. I'm not sure I follow you about truth. Okay. How is truth not a fact? Give me uh, an example. It can be a fact. Yeah. Truth, your truth is different from my truth. Ah, that's bullshit. You think all truth is... Well, it's either a fact or it isn't. It's not well, my truth, truth isn't and your truth. truth isn't a fact. They're there's not no, the same I don't believe in that. My truth and your truth. There's, okay, you there's one truth. There's one truth, which is the fact. 
There's your opinion. There's right. your perception of something. Truths are opinions because like people who follow a specific religion, they follow their truth, and then there's multiple religions that all, just as an example. Okay, well, we just are, you know, semantics over the word truth. Right. I but mean, I think of it as, yeah, I don't see it as That's what I said, yeah. You, you I, believe to me, it's to me, to me, truth is fact, and opinion is, is something co that comes from our experiences. Okay. That's how I see it. Okay, that's completely valid and fair. And if anything, a bit more respectable too, because it's like, so it's another, like along the lines of the thing that I was saying where you just, you are hard and fast all the time. It's hard not to respect it, because it's like no one else will do that. No one else, like you're saying, you have to be brave to be able to do it. You do have to be brave, because you have to be willing to lose shit. You for have being to be very brave. You have to be extremely brave. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm, I'm scared shitless a lot of the time. I can imagine. I'm scared to come to this interview. I was scared to come here. I could break down and cry at any second because inside Please. it's hard, mm -hmm. but someone's got to do it. Mm -hmm. I got to get my shit together. I have to be tough because what happens when I cry? What happens when people are like, well, who's the real you? Well, it's all the real me. Mm -hmm. I am tough. I do but agree I, with that too. But I am also human. And, and we, if you're mean to me and, and you're mean to the cause that I care so deep and you're making it so much worse for the animals, that's not okay. We saw my ex-girlfriend in public at Pad Thai. What would you have done if I would have started crying? Why would you cry? I'm just a sensitive little boy. Why? Because she walked into a building? Fuck. What? Doesn't make sense. Would you give call me, me a pussy? Give me a better example. It was just a. It was just a random. Yeah, it's not a good one, Caleb. Because that's um, just somebody walking in. Why would you cry? There's no reason to cry. What if I had a deep she, fear? Let's say you think she. If she gave you the middle finger, or give me an example to, that I can hold on to. I don't know. Well, it's more of a joke. Okay. Anything. What if I walked outside and my deep fear? Of the Let sun, me know, eh? When we're switching from serious to joke, because I don't always know. <laughs> That's the whole point of this. That, that's just the whole like brand of my channel is it's all the same. It's good. It's good. I, to I'm sorry. I'm probably screwing up because I've been I've been so super serious. No, you've been, you've been doing I've been too job. serious. No, you're not. You want me to lighten up? What do you want me to do? Put some music. Let's dance. <laughs> By the way. Put some music. Let's dance. When I came here, and I was knew that I was going to be surrounded by young people. I was like, oh, thank God. Bunch mm -hmm. of energy. And then you I called us in, you, Well, I just I said you're all so schmurnered. Like we're stoners. I've never smoked I've pot never, in my life. I never. You know what? I never ever thought that. Just so you know, I never okay. thought that it's you were. I never right, thought that you were smoking okay, pot. I just said I feel like I'm in a room right. of people who are just kind of like. Oh, we were just so hanging silent. out. We were scared. We thought you were gonna just start fucking shoving carrots in our butts or something. <laughs> Not actually, but you. You. It was. It was very surprising. I and and pleasantly surprising too. And that's another thing. I feel like a lot of my videos. I haven't. Comparatively speaking, I haven't gone hard to the route that a lot of people have. You have to admit. And I've also, I've also denounced veganism you less You know what? I didn't cry on too many videos, and I cried on one of yours. So no. And you know why? Because if you remember, you and I talked on the phone at one point. Do mm -hmm. you remember that? I did. And I thought, he seems like he's okay. But then something happened, and you did something shitty. I don't know what. I don't know the order in which things happened. But I think that's part of it, is that I saw you as somebody deeper, more intelligent somehow mm -hmm. than the others. Like, not like just some gamer like Sniper Wolf, like, you know, right. the fact when you, just, you know, when you told me you're homeschooled, I'm like, okay, you know, and I think that's what hurt the most is that I didn't manage to win you over to, um, to at least be neutral about it. And just right. when you posted a video, just what yesterday, I don't, I'm just scrolling through, I didn't even see what yeah. it was. And there, there's just like going on about meat again. It's like, I can't fucking win. I can't make any progress. Right. This well, is like banging my head against the wall. There is a disconnect. There's a huge disconnect. Um, and that's just the nature, I feel like, of how all this stuff works. Is like it always, you said 100 clicks, right? I mean, you can't just expect to change every single amount of programming someone has in the, in the first moment you meet them, even a year, two years, whatever. I'm 26 years old. I have vastly different beliefs now than I did when I was eight. Mm. And then 18. And you know, this is the thing, even now, Caleb, like, I don't know what you're going to do with this video, if you're going to twist it around and make me seem mean or whatever you're going to do, right? I, I probably know. will. I don't know, probably. I won't, by the <laughs> way. I, I promise to you I will not. I will not. I might give you a really big head at one point. <laughs> at some point. No. But, um, oh, this <laughs> thing. Um, don't give me head. Whoa! <laughs> um, so... Bazinga! <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, no, what were we talking about? No, 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 so, okay, so... Mm -hmm. My hope, okay, is right. that something will happen with you, okay? First mm -hmm. of all, you, you talk a lot about health, mm -hmm. okay? And you have enough money to buy whatever you want. Very rich. So it's not like you need to, you know, I don't know. Because people often use that as an excuse, which is, right. by the way, total bullshit. You do not need a lot of money to be mm -hmm. vegan because oats don't cost much, neither do beans or chickpeas or lentils. None of this stuff costs a lot of money, okay? so I just, do agree. From, so, from the, so I hope, yeah. I just have to say, I really, really hope 
Caleb, mm -hmm. that um, because your staff around you, you've, you've said you've, I, I don't know, what, I don't really know what you say is true or not, okay, but I'll take it for face. You right. said that you've been eating vegan as you go along. Yeah. They've had a bit of exposure to me. They've had a bit of, you know, vegan food in them mm -hmm. and stuff, and they've heard the word vegan over and over. And, you know, I'm hoping that we're giving kind of everyone some clicks. Yeah. And that I'm just really hoping that you, as the leader of these people who are around you all the your time. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because I did that for you, okay, right. I, want, I want a clickbait too. Okay, look at the camera and say, everyone be vegan from now on. Everyone be vegan from now on. Good. Now say, go fucking vegan. Go fucking vegan. <laughs> oh, that sounded like go fucking vegan. Well, that's okay too. Go fucking vegan. <laughs> <laughs> They're attractive. They smell like bananas. Um, yeah, I have no problem. I, I genuinely hold no ill will with any against anyone who isn't doing something that's that's causing more suffering. Like genuinely, and there's no there's no way to you, you can't say that vegans are like bad, right? Veganism as a whole is not bad, right? The, I've, the real vegans who are there for ethical reason, the right. reasons and not you know for health because that's not vegan. It's not about the environment. Well, these things are benefits, right? right. But what I was going to say, just as a just as an, a, an idea, is what I would love f from you is to think about doing something, a simple thing that's measurable, mm -hmm. and that is you have a house and you have restaurants everywhere, right. right? Please consider that when you, from now on, bring items into the house, try to see if you can try and make it a vegan house. That is to say, don't buy anything made out of leather. And okay. if you really feel the need to eat a corpse, say, guys, take it outside. Right. Just think about it. Is it possible? I mean, can you just not, you have a massive fridge. You already have oat milk in there. I do, I, I, right? do not, I don't eat dairy. You don't eat dairy. Right, right? already, just because it makes me poop. Okay, well, that's not, that's not the right reason because you know your, your colleagues might say, but we want some cheese. I have whatever. a strong lack of empathy. That's another problem that I have. Okay. Compassion. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Anyway, so that right. all to say, I so, see what you're so saying. if it's not dairy, what about mm -hmm. eggs? Uh, I hate eggs. Okay, so you know this is already something you could do. Mm -hmm. Again, not the right reason because if you liked eggs, that still yeah. goes. You know, understand what I'm saying, I mean, right? I'm still a piece of shit. So, so the, what's left is really meat. Right. Uh, honey. Anybody? Can I like do, honey. Any, you don't need honey, right? You don't need it. I don't need it. No, no, right. no, no, no. Okay. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> The, the only thing is really the corpses, right? right? The corpses, right? The dead bodies. So if you had no corpses in here, what would that look like? What, what, what? Um, there's no, there's no chicken. There's right. no, there's no hamburger. Mm -hmm. Look, your freaking restaurants everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, put a big sign on your door: vegan home. Vegan home. I see what you're saying. You're, you're just saying you to have my house just specifically be vegan, and if, and if we can't do that, you know, if we can't be vegan. All the time we could go out to eat whatever. It's sort of a reminder. It's like a. It's like it's like a giving an example to the world that you're trying. Yeah. You know. I see what you're saying. Yeah. That's that is very reasonable, and I feel like uh, I feel like a lot of people would agree that that is also very reasonable. That seems like a completely reasonable thing to me to just try, right? Just that's try. all. Just keep yeah. trying. Yeah. Inspiration, not desperation, right? That's right. Yeah. I came up with that, by the cool. way. I tell people that a lot, especially my, my parents. I tell them they need to act out of inspiration desperation because they're getting old. And then eventually they're going to regret making dumb decisions like drinking a beer or Dr. Pepper. Mm. Well, wait, what, what do you mean? Let me, let me make sure I understand that. So how is, what's the desperation in that example you gave? Uh, let's say you're, you know, if you were an alcoholic, not specifically to my parents, they're not alcoholics, but if you're an alcoholic, eventually your liver will fail. Right you then have to stop drinking alcohol out of desperation. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So it's better to, to live an ideal life through inspiration as opposed to desperation, to make the decision yourself. Yeah. 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 And, and I think in, in some ways you and I are alike that way, that we, we both, um, we were talking about suffering, we were talking mm -hmm. about Wim Hof. I love suffering. <laughs> I'm here right now. <laughs> as so, am I, yeah, yeah. so am I. <laughs> Well, no, I have a motto. When in doubt, check it out. Yeah, you've said that. Yeah, that's... right. So, like, if you're again, hard not to respect it. You know, it, it, when I'm really nervous and mm -hmm. I don't want to do it, it's like, well, try. Just do just, it. Just do it. Yeah. You know, eighty percent of life is just showing up. Mm -hmm. Right. That's true. I tell, I tell it to my students too. Like, you, you know, like if you're, if you just don't want to come to school, just at least put your ass in the chair. And even if you're not paying attention fully, you're not doing your homework. You're at least there, and you'll right. get something. 
Same as with a job, you know, like, especially if you ever, in college, typically, mm -hmm. people stop going to classes, mm -hmm. and next thing you know, you're just out of it. You're it just keep yeah. showing up. You just got to keep going. And then it'll, like, if you make the bare minimum, if you put in the bare minimum effort, you're still putting an effort, and it adds up. Yeah. So. One of the things I did when I went back to school to become a teacher, because I was a nurse first, and then mm -hmm. I did a crossover to become a, go to university. Right. So um, I made a point of when I took the subway to make sure that I would always take the stairs up. There was about 113 steps or whatever. No matter what I said, with my mm -hmm. nap that cool. was really heavy, I just thought, I'm just gonna take the stairs. It's gonna be for four years I'm gonna do that. And I never broke it once, even when I had a high fever and everything. And that was just sort of like, you know, cause it's good to suffer a bit. Because when you do that, you, t you, you teach yourself yeah. that you're, you, you, what, right. you can do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I like. Uh, I think I could probably do something like that, but eventually, I feel like one day I would just say, "I don't feel like it." Right, yeah. and then you pick another thing. I don't feel like it. Yeah. I mean, it's fair enough. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't mean you have to do it forever if you don't want to. But I made. I this, see the value. I made the commitment to myself mm -hmm. because I saw the value, and it was measurable and easy. Yeah. You know, it's like these New Year's resolutions. I'm going to run five oh, yeah. five k a day. I love well, that's, New Year's. That's just like what? Did, what was your resolution? Uh, to well, have I, no resolution. No, no. Uh, my resolution was to work out more. And I've done, every year consistently I work out more. What's more? Uh, I work out in different ways and have a more complicated split with my workouts. So just doing more varied things instead of just having a routine necessarily. So uh, instead of writing anything down, I just do whatever my body, I feel like my body would want to do. Right. Based on how I feel. Do you swim laps in your pool? In the summer, yes. Do you ever run outside? Uh, I'm not a huge runner. It hurts my back for some reason. Hmm. Um, I like to walk though. I walk a lot. Like speed walk type yes, thing. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I, I like walking. that too. I also can't walk. I, have, I run. I mean, I have one leg longer than the other, and it, I also have <laughs> problems with my back. You mentioned you wanted to cover this. Uh, it's about transphobia. Well, did, did we, we talked about it a bit. Um, so what I feel... Okay, well, let me, yeah. let me preface it by saying sure. people say that you are transphobic, and the reason specifically that we have written down is uh, you made comments about how kids shouldn't be encouraged to transition or be put on hormones um, as they're, when they're in their youth. Right, they shouldn't be encouraged to do right. so. Right, they shouldn't be encouraged. Right. Yeah, you, you didn't specifically say that it, it should not be a lot, like, like uh, compelled by law, like it shouldn't be illegal necessarily, but your specific words were that it should not be encouraged. Right. And you were called transphobic as a result of that. Right. So what I think is that the whole thing is still relatively new. There's a lot of surgeries happening on younger people. And I think that, you know, we are kind of evolving and trying to find our way mm -hmm. as a society. Um, and I think that it's a complex thing. However, I agree. what I said and many times in my lives over on TikTok and things like that, and when people say, you know, how do you feel about the trans community? My answer is always, well, who in there? Which person? Right, individuals. I don't believe in all this, you know, okay. these groups. So just because you're trans doesn't mean you're going to be a good person or a bad person. It, but what I, what I do not like is uh, excess navel-gazing. We talked about that. People right. who care about their looks too much. I mean, there's an extent where you have to if you're, something about your looks is just mm -hmm. taking away from your message, right? Like I have a cold sore, right? And I covered it up a little bit because I don't want it to, to take away from my message. Right. I want people to listen to me and pay attention. By the way, and with the lighting, you, I, you cannot see it. Okay, anyway. Like, I promise. So, yeah, whatever. It's, you know, the point is that um, when it comes to trans people, I, I feel the same way as I do about women who wear a ton of makeup and have their nails this way. And they can't leave the house without these shoes that are high heels. I just think it's ridiculous because you're not being a real person. You're not ready to dance at any moment. Mm -hmm. You're not ready to save someone's life. Like you have to wear proper shoes. What if there's an emergency and you have to? You have a split second to, you know, grab a kid who's about to get right. hit by a car or something. Mm -hmm. Like you have. I'm not saying you should not ever dress up, okay? But I'm just saying, as a normal course of events, I believe that people should be comfortable, and men typically have their shit together that way. You know, you being might. Comfortable. Well, you just, you know, you're just normal. You going you, to Mando, etc. <laughs> Socks have you ever been on. on a nude beach? Uh, no, but I'd gladly go. Yeah. There's not a lot of nude beaches in Texas. People like covering up their wieners up here in here. Sometimes me and my, my roommates, we bask na nude in the sun in the summer. Yeah. Now that you have a new uh, employee, we don't do that Cassie, anymore. I guess you're not going to do that anymore. She's a girl. She's not allowed. Okay, yeah. well, why, why not? Because that's what a nude beach is, is right? Just everybody naked. Um, well, that's because it's my, uh, I'm the boss. 
That's right. And if I said... That's the right answer. <laughs> yes, Thank exactly. You. <laughs> I feel like that would be incredibly inappropriate, and I would never want to do that. But right. if it was my cousin, I would say, pull your cock out, we're going sunbathing. <laughs> so. Don't forget the sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, okay, that, that's a uh, very... It's a, that's a, that is a, a valid response to that. I have People been, by the way. What, nude, to nude beaches? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I've been to two. Well, one, there's a, there's a camp that has, a, mm -hmm. it's actually a religious camp. It's called, it's a Unitarian. It's a religion that is, like, not a religion. Baha'i? No. Baha'is are against the gays. Are they? Yeah. I thought it was all the religions combined. Yeah, but they're not really. Okay. Because when I was shopping, when I was shopping for a religion, see, when my kids were born, I went religious shopping, mm -hmm. right? Went to, <laughs> but we know not church. We need a religion for these kids. That's awesome. And I just went to a bunch of them. I'm like, no, 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 no. Oh, but hi, all the religions combined. That yeah. sounds nice. And then I asked them point blank. I said, what do you do if there's a kid who is gay here? They said, yeah. we try to encourage them not to be. And I said, you can't do that. Yeah. You can't see, and this is what people don't understand. How can there's no way that I'm transphobic because right. I know that's fucking wrong. How can you tell somebody who to love or who not to love? You want to hold hands with somebody, do it, mm -hmm. right? So uh, that's why I said, I said, are you guys serious, really? They said, yeah. Like we can try to, you know, talk them out of it and explain. And I'm like, you can't. For yeah. me, I kind of was lucky because I could have sort of a choice, if you know what I mean. Right, because you're married to a man, like you mentioned. Right, but it could have been just as easily married to a woman. I just mm -hmm. didn't find the woman, you know? Like, And it turns out that it's a lot easier because I kind of always wanted to have at least one kid, you know, to see what it's like kind of thing. But yeah, the nude beaches, mm -hmm. um, that was just a thing. This How long ago? Well, so the religion is called Unitarian Universalist. And they are, you know, pro-gay rights. They were one of the first religions to marry gay people, which right. I helped to fight for, by the way, in Canada. I was the one writing letters saying, like, these gay people should be allowed to marry. Like, we, we actually found some of your letters. Did you, you? From long, long, long ago, yeah. There, there's like a footprint of your activism online. Oh, cool. Yeah, and it's, it's I mean, you You did some digging. Yeah, Did you see bit. my anti-circumcision ones as well? We did. We saw all everything, yeah. It's, yeah, it's actually, you've, you have a history. That's what I'm saying with the whole black and white thing. It's not men's disrespect. It is impressive how you fight for this stuff and you're brave and you just don't, don't give up, which is cool. Because a lot of people are just total grifters, which that's another thing I wanted to ask. A lot of people think you're a grifter but because you, you attack like Call Me Chris and Gordon Ramsay and stuff like that. This is strategic. That's exactly. Okay, that's, and it's strategic because I watched a video by Direct Action Everywhere, which talked about the science of social change. And what they said is you have to be a bit of a shit disturber. Okay, and this is, you have to kind of like wave your arms around so mm -hmm. that you get attention to the cause. Because when I used to be on Facebook, I was in a, like an echo chamber. Right. And you need to get out of the echo chamber because we don't have time. Right. We, we don't have time to just talk about recipes mm -hmm. and pat each other on the back for, for you know, holding, holding a little sign outside of one place uh, for just for fur for five minutes, you right. know, like, no. And this is the problem, you know, I was with all the people in Montreal holding signs out again from Canada Goose and everything like mm -hmm. that. But like, okay guys, the McDonald's, the famous McDonald's song, Yeah. 15 ba -da -ba. seconds. Before doing that, okay. I was going to my vegan community in Montreal saying, guys, we need to do this. We need music. Mm -hmm. We need fun and we need music. I want to go and do this song. It's gonna, I'm going to compose a quick song. We're going to all sing it. It's going to be a great video. Everyone's going to see it. And I'm like, eh, I'm too shy. Oh, that sounds kind of weird. I'm like, not one of you will come. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. I'm doing it myself. F say fuck you. Fuck you to everyone. That was really disappointing. I, right? I, because you know what they want to do, these vegan activists? They want to be a, a big fish in a little pond. Mm -hmm. That's, they're happy. Like There's many people that I know right. who are surrounded by, oh my God, this person's yes, the man. greatest activist right. echo ever. Chambers. They're like so good. You have no yeah. echo chamber. It's like, but get out. At a very young, young age when they're teaching you to be polite and yeah. nice and everything, they should teach critical thinking skills. Like, mm -hmm. like that's the only thing they should be teaching, honestly. Yeah. Because when you have critical thinking skills, you know how to learn. You know how to find information right. on your own. Yeah. That's... And like I said, I've said so many hundreds of times that I was homeschooled. One of the things that I learned as a very, at a very young age is that my, my dad, who is a man who grew up in Virginia in the woods and from the 70s, he was born in 1973, very, just like born with a bow, gun in his hands, et cetera, right. But all at, at the same time, when I grew up with him and I was a farrier with him and he would go to his jobs, uh, there was a lot of people who were extremely liberal, right? Like extremely liberal. My dad's fairly apolitical, but he would tell me, he'd be like, she's a liberal. Don't say anything to be disrespectful. 
You have to be respectful. They believe different things than we do. All right? They do not want George W. Bush to be the next president of the United States of America. And I do. And I want Osama bin Laden to get fucked. But this woman, she's a liberal. She does not believe that. We have to be respectful. We have to listen to what she has to say. And we need to get her work done. That, like, that's how I learned, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I think, uh, and that was when I was, whatever, 5 to 13. Just consistently, my dad's never been disrespectful to anyone, regardless of who they are, what they believe, no matter what. Uh, and I feel like that's something that people need to learn, for sure. It's just how to be, be able to, to relate on some other level, whether it's just you're both alive and breathing. If how would your father, myself. if he was an animal defender like me, mm-hmm. how would he get as much notoriety by being respectful? I don't, see, that's, that's the thing about my dad. And I when I say notoriety, I mean, like, just how do you get the message the out? Influence. Without, I don't want to be mean. He, he just wouldn't. He would live uh, that's right. transcendentalist. He would, do, d- d- he, would, he would detach himself from society, I'm sure. He would have his own little thing, and he wouldn't want to be bothered, which is what he does now. Right, and see, you're not going to like what I'm going to say, because I know you love your dad. Mm-hmm. Okay, but there's two kinds of people in the world. What? There's polite people. Uh-huh. And there's good people. Right. Your dad is polite. Right. But he's not good because he's not doing enough to help society. It's not good enough to just not kill a cat yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to prevent other people from doing it. It's an example of truth. You have to be out there. You have your own individual truth. He has his own individual truth. I'm not sure what you're saying. I think what you're saying is that he has his own experiences because we were talking about the truth. No, well, you believe that he's not good, he's polite. He believes that he's a good person. Because right. he does, he doesn't, he doesn't like actively harm people, or and that, that's right. What he's but you know about. what your dad would have done during World War II? He would have let, he would have let the Nazis take off the take away the Germans, and he would just said, "Well, I'm not doing anything myself." Well, no, he wouldn't. He he's patriotic. He's not just a he. But I'm talking about a call. You said the the. You know, it's too personal. I regret calls. using your dad as an example because it's just it's it's. Well, it's not it's, too personal. It's just it's not. I I want to use someone like that. Okay, let's pretend I'm not talking about your dad okay. because. Mr. Oompa, I'm sure you're a really nice guy, okay? Well, I it, really do think no, you are. It wasn't I'm not too saying personal. that. I'm just trying to make the point that we have to be brave and we can't just mm-hmm. care about our own little yeah. mini circle. Some people do, though, and they believe that they're the people around them that they love are the most important thing in life, which is that's what I believe, personally. That's my truth as well. Okay, so who's your best friend? Uh, Clint, my cousin. Okay, so... If your cousin wasn't your cousin, mm-hmm. and he was in the other tribe over there, you'd say, fuck him. Who cares? I wouldn't say, fuck him. Well, and I wouldn't would, just if he was in trouble, say, it would be like, okay, well, let him fight over there, because we're just our tribe here. No, you I don't mean, see how wrong that is? No, you're doing the black and white thing, though, because there's nuance and context. Well, what is that? That's what I'm saying. With your dad, if you're saying, if you're, or, again, we, we said, I, mm-hmm. I said I wasn't going to try and mention him, but you can keep mentioning this is him. the problem with the world, mm-hmm. is people don't give a shit beyond themselves. And we have to be, we have to always, as a, I think as a society, we have to try to find the way to ha- have the least amount of people suffer. We mm-hmm. have to be smart, we have to think about it and have discussions about it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there will be victims for the greater good, I think. Right. And I think that we all have Buildings a response. Buildings will burn. Hmm? Buildings will burn. I think that we, we have to be brave enough to have those conversations. I agree. That, that's, that's another example of your extremism, though. Is because most having people having conversations? No, no, no. I'm just saying specifically about like most people are the problem. They want to they want to live their they just want to have their own like life that's easy, whatever. They just want to stay to themselves, keep in their little circle, mm-hmm. be the big fish. Um, that most people are 80-20, right? You can be 80-20. You can be 80% something and then 20% something. So uh, like my dad is an example, to continue to use my dad, my poor father. Uh, <laughs> What's uh, his first name? Jesse. Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> He's a good guy. He has a great sense of humor. He won't be offended. He, let's say he, he, he does, 20% of what he does is, is, is trying to do stuff for the community and help out, right? Okay. You know, and 80%, he's, he's taking care of my mom. He's taking care of his property. He's doing stuff with me, interacting with me. So it's not, it's not all black and white. That's what I'm saying. There is a value to that extremism. And then my and example of my father important. was that he's not like that. He would be more than willing to support okay. a cause. But if it takes away from that 80% that he loves, that keeps him balanced and sane mm-hmm. and 
that makes him feel good to be living on earth. And it helps you to feel good because he's taking care of you. He's got your back or whatever. Like exactly. I see the value okay, in that. You there see, you go. In that sense, I'm 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 not a leftist in the sense that I do believe in the family unit. Mm -hmm. Like in a way, okay. you know. Like so, I'm torn, right? Because I believe that we we need good good fathers, we need good mothers, or it could be two dads and not the same. I'm just saying we mm -hmm. need good parents. We need a community. Mm -hmm. I believe in the idea of church, the idea of going to a building at once a week and being quiet. And listening to some words of wisdom, not religious stuff, but like right. the greatest. Imagine if the greatest speakers are like we we were read, a, mm -hmm. you know, Socrates or somebody read to us Stoicism. Like here's your idea, here's our ideas, our suggestions for the week. Right. Try to think of these things, right? We all went out and we all came back the next week. How did you do? Did you did you do the thing? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. How great would that be? A, Saying, lot, a lot of those guys, those philosophers, though, are all they all withdrew themselves from society because there was no way for what they believed in to fit in with, with society. So they just withdrew themselves at the risk of going, of going insane. Like uh, my, yeah. favorite, my favorite... Like I think Gary Yorosky did. Right, exactly. That's he my, had to. He, because he was just going insane. Mm -hmm. Gary Yorosky is a very strong animal rights activist, in case nobody knows. And the, one of the reasons that I'm vegan and one of the reasons that I'm so outspoken because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he just realized he could... After all these years, his family was still assholes. Yeah. They were still eating meat in front of him. And it would have been so easy them for them to not be. Mm -hmm. And because he found, I think, animal rights activists not as strong as the, he was hoping they would be. Yeah, I think, uh, too, another thing, the, uh, the, the withdrawing yourself from society as like a result of something. My favorite books are, are, or my favorite stories, lessons, whatever, are from the transcendentalists, like, like Ralph, Waldo, Ralph Waldo Emerson and uh, Henry David Thoreau. He's Unitarian. Right. Yeah, okay. Is it a Did good example? Did you know example? that? Yes. Oh, you, oh, so you know about the religion a bit. Or you've I, heard about it. Anyway. I've heard about it. It's one of those things that doesn't really stick out in my mind. Yeah, it's okay. Um, but yeah, th those guys, I mean, that's their whole, that's their thing is to just withdraw themselves from society and then critique it from afar and then provide their own examples and then live their own lives outside of it, which I find that very interesting and very, uh, it seems fulfilling to me to be able to just have your own thing because no, there's too many voices. There's too many, there's just too much going on um, and like for a long time we were tribal and had just a small group of people to worry about. So when it gets beyond that, some people just aren't cut out for it. And then there's people like you who are, who are extremists. I don't mean that negatively, by the way. What's the statistic? Something like that you can be friends or have a tribe of 150 and then it has to split? Is that? Yeah, yeah. it's something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's interesting. But anyways, a little lost in the weeds there, but that, I feel like that was a very, very valuable conversation. Yeah, and we, I never told you about the nude beach. Let's hear about it. I don't know how we got yeah. off the subject. Is there a video of it? <laughs> no. Okay, so just, just quick. So what okay. it was is there's a camp, there's a camp and it's, yeah. a, it's a Unitarian camp, mm -hmm. and they have a clothing optional beach. It's not very big, and it's clothing optional. And it's very respectful. It's very interesting because there's kids there right. and grandparents, old hippies, and it is just like nobody gives a shit. You just somebody's just reading a book there and you know they got their boobs all out and they're yeah. all different body Tits types. Like so my kids would see that. When my kids were little, they all wore bathing suits. Well, we didn't know what, what it's like when kids are really young. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. they run around because yeah, their naked. diaper's wet and I, they just go, Yeah, right? I did that. Right, okay. So there's that. But then there's that, that stage where you own, everyone always keeps a bathing suit on. And then it's like, anyway. So it was kind of interesting. I took my kids to the, to the other beach. And then they, as they were grew up, they started to go to the camp by themselves. And then I found out that they were, you know, going mm -hmm. naked with all the friends. They, you know, we did uh, synchronized swimming, right. with a bunch of women together and things like that. So... I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay. I mean, it's yeah. not a, it not, wasn't a big deal. It's not a big deal. And I love pulling the wiener out. If it was more legal, I'd do it more. If it was legal, it's not illegal though. It is very illegal. Yeah, it makes me really uncomfortable when people do it. Like it happened to me beside, I went to a movie by myself, Chariots of Fire one time when I was younger. I used to do things by And beside it was an Academy Award winning movie. I thought, I want to see this movie that everyone's seen. And it was, I was, I was a nurse, so I was working all different shifts. And you saw a dick instead? I just went instead and some guy just came in, you know how the th theater's like sort of empty? Yeah. And this guy like just literally comes and sits like right beside me. And I'm just like, okay. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, um, this is weird, but... I'm not moving. Fuck this. this gonna punch <laughs> Why should I move? Yeah, okay, it's bizarre, but True. anyway, then sure enough. Photos his wiener out. At one point, he starts rubbing himself. I'm like, okay, now I'm leaving. Now Whoa. then, I was a young lady, like where I was young, like 20. And, um, and uh, so I went downstairs and I said, um, there's a guy masturbating beside me. And they're like, oh shit. Um, I said, can you take him out? Is it Pee Wee Herman? <laughs> can you, I don't know. <laughs> Didn't you get in trouble for that? 
I think I, I something like that. Yeah, something. Anyway, I just told them and then I left. You know, but I but Good this move. is this is one of the beginnings of me realizing that uh, like see, this is a part of it is like so I had a, a lot of bad experiences with men actually as well. That's fair. A lot yeah, of people have. A lot yeah. of men are kind of. Just, I know a lot I of men. I hate to group them all together, but I know a lot of men and a lot of them do. are dickheads. A lot of them are dickheads. That's why I got my my baby boys with me because they're good folk. <laughs> They're good people, and we're getting better every day. That's good. Yeah. Happy to hear it. So yeah, you made a video a year ago, and you talked about banned words. Is the the infamous, the infamous N word incident? Yeah. The infamous N word. Uh, the the one that I saw that I'm speaking of specifically is the one where you had uh, the N word as an. Uh, What's the N word? The the N word that is used to refer to, uh, re used to refer to black people in a racist way. I don't know which one you mean. Can you say it? Uh, no. Why? Because it's very, very, I mean, the world we live in, I have the right to self-preserve. It would be, I, I admit that it is just a word, it is a sound. But at the same time, a lot of people find it incredibly disrespectful to do, just say. Do you find it, do you, when you look at a dictionary and you see it written there, do you're like, that's disrespect, do you go out and cross it out everywhere? I'm a white person, so no. Uh, I've never My been called the N-word. Uh -huh. So I have no idea. You've been called? I've never been called oh. the N-word. So I, I don't have a, but I, the point is a lot of people are very, very, very attached to that word in a negative way. Right. Uh, which is completely valid. And I would never call somebody of that. Of course not. Because it's mean, mm -hmm. and why would you do it? Of course. Right? Yep. But, but you, I completely, fundamentally disagree with banning any words. Right. And I think this is what's wrong, is that we are now banning, starting to ban words, mm -hmm. and when that's okay, we're going to start banning more words. And then books, and then guns. And then gays. No. Don't ban the guns. <laughs> uh, no, uh, oh, I see. Fuck, why did I say that? This is gonna be. A no, I clip. promise to you, I will not. I won't. I won't fuck you over it. I no, promise. But, no, but it's whatever. Don't ban the guns. <laughs> Trump twenty twenty. <2020. laughs> uh, no, for real though. I, I agree. I don't think words should be banned, but I think it's completely valid for a lot of people to get very angry at someone for saying a word. I don't think it's. I don't agree. I okay. think they should be angry if it's used in a context that's hurtful. Okay, that's fair. And there's nothing wrong with somebody like me who made the suggestion out of the goodness of my heart and I thought to myself, <laughs> how if how would I do this? I cha you know, I challenged right. my victimhood and I thought, okay, how would I feel if this word is so hurtful? You need to look at me because I'm making a good point. Okay. Now you're looking at your notes, but this well, is important. I was just making sure I was on the right page. Okay. This is important. Okay, go ahead. Right? Mm -hmm. Why is it wrong for a white person to make a suggestion and if a black person made that suggestion, they would think, that's interesting, let's consider that. That's racism right there. And that's what I disagree with. Anybody should be able to make a suggestion and my suggestion was when I wrote the thing, if that, if, let's say I had adopted a dark-skinned child, right? What would I say to her? You're a victim, this is terrible, you should cry every day somebody says a word. No, I would say, it sucks. Those people are mean. But here's what you do. You just duck out of the way. Right. Right? Or in your mind you think, what does that stand for? And I made an acronym. Naturally intelligent, gorgeous, generous, exemplary, radiant. So I saw, thought to myself, if I have a if if my one of my kids marries a dark skinned girl and they have a mm -hmm. child, that that's what I would say to my granddaughter. When they call you that, that's what you are. You say, Yes, I am. Would you say the word? Would I say the word in the in the kitchen or whatever if I'm talking to well, her? Well, you asked me if I would say the word. No, listen, if I was talking to my granddaughter who had dark skin, let's say, right? Yes, I would say the word. I say, if they call you this N-word, I'm not going to say it now. Why? Because we have a fucked up world and you will be canceled and so will I, right? Mm -hmm. But there's nothing wrong with saying it. If I knew for a fact that your views would not go down, and that everyone would be sane, and that YouTube wouldn't like, <laughs> right? I could bleep it. I would say it. I'll bleep it. I'm not going to say it. I don't trust you. So I, I'm, I'm not stupid. I'm not black and white. I, you, I'm somebody who understands the nuance. What if I nuance. promise? I feel like if I have... And why would I say it? What's the point? Well, because you're not afraid of, to say words. I'm not afraid to say it in the right context. And I think if we're talking about That's something, valid, that it's, right. there's no point in me saying it. We know what we're talking about, right? right? And so I'm just saying that, yes, I would tell my granddaughter or any other child, and that was what I was trying to do, is just say, look, these people are mean, so when they tell you the word or they call you that, just say, yeah. Yeah. And I gave you the example about being queer. When mm -hmm. I was younger, mm -hmm. the word queer meant right. something bad. And they said, oh yeah? You're not going to hurt us with that word. Right. We're going to claim it. You funny. We're here. We're queer. Get used to it. And I we're thought, here? what a fucking smart thing to do. Right. So that's what, and, and you know, the black people have already done that anyway. 
They already call each other that. And sometimes they even allow their white friends to say it, but it's only certain people at certain times, yeah. and you only have the An hard R pass. and this. Oh my God, yeah, this is all pass. bullshit. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules to it. Um, but yeah, okay, well that's, I mean, that's, that's yeah. There you go. So Explained, I feel That's like. how I feel about the racism thing. I think I've explained myself about the transphobia, maybe, I don't know. Now this is a drastic jump from what we just talked about. You had a channel called The Teacher. Yeah. What was that, what were you trying to teach about? Well, the has never ended because we've been abusing animals and people forever. All that's happened is that, you know, the humans, luckily they shut down that part of it, but they are still continuing with the animals. The, right. the pigs are still going in gas chambers. And the reason I called it that is I can't remember, it actually had a different name to begin with, I think, something. And I thought, you know what, I want to, I want to be, I want to test. I want to push the envelope. I want to see how far I can go with this. It is pushing the envelope. It is because people, again, another word, like how dare you, but simply means mass destruction on a large scale. That's what it means. You talk about a nuclear, what are they talking about? People dying overtly from a nuclear blast. On a large scale, Bad. right? Bad, right? Preventable. Right. Do you see how that would upset people though? Uh, nope. Okay. I mean, what do you mean? What do you want me to say? Yes, of course I do on one level. Of course, that's why I did it because I want to make people aware and to think about it. I don't want to upset them. I want them to make them go, "What? Oh." And and how did we come up with this idea? It wasn't me that came up with it. It was Jewish people who became vegan because of what happened in the now, There's one guy named Alex Herschel, and you can hear his speech. And it is very interesting. He's the one who had family members who were in, in the Holocaust, and he realized what, one day he was just looking at you know, the branding that they put on their arms and the branding that you put on the animals, mm -hmm. and he was looking at the, 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 the enslavement and the, 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 the inhumanity of it all and, and the gas chambers. Like There's so many things that, that are the same. And if you don't think it's the same, then explain to me how it's not. And you're going to say, well, one's animals and one's people. And I'm going to say, so? And you're going to say, well, because one's animals and one's people. And I'll say, so? And then it comes down to, well, one is smarter than the other. And is that how we measure what's important? You happen to like ants and you said you like bees because there's a certain intellect. And I, we sort of had a bit of a, cha a ch talk about that, right? Versus a firefly or I'm whatever. an animal rights psychopath. I have only like bugs that provide entertainment. And animals that provide entertainment. Yeah, well, you know, you have your issues. You do. I do. You have your issues, but you, but you also have some potential, you know, because people who are a bit on the, on the, people who are a bit different can be different in a good way, you know. And I, you know, I've said this to you before, but I, I mean, you don't want to insult your audience, but you're, you're too smart to do what you're doing. Like I'm, I'm seeing you evolve. I'm seeing you evolving, and you should be, you know. Anyway. I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to be awesome. Next stop is porn for me. <laughs> um, all right, sorry. So we'll go back to the, uh, I feel like that's a, that's a good response to the, to the uh, or a good ex explanation for the Holocaust type stuff, right? It's not at all to say that what the Jews went through wasn't horrible. It was horrific. Of course. It, and it was wrong. Of course. And we should learn from that and channel that energy and see what else is wrong. Carding sentient beings off to slaughter, to be, right. uh, to be uh, used as objects, commodified, all of it. It's just wrong. It's unnecessary. By that logic, though, that means meat eaters would be as bad as Nazis. Well, it depends who. Okay, If you're a 10-year-old meat eater, you're not. But if what you about are, a 20-year-old? If you are a 26-year-old who knows what's going on and has seen the documentaries, you know who Gary Yarovsky is? Mm -hmm. You've seen Dominion? Yeah. You know who Carnism Debunked is? Yes. Right? You know all that? George Jones. You choose mm -hmm. deliberately to eat meat because you don't give a fuck? Yeah, there's something seriously wrong with you. Okay. What do you think is psychopathy? Yeah. You think I'm a psychopath? Um, sociopath, some, I don't know, narcissist, something's wrong. Douche? <laughs> Bare minimum, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But, I don't know, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think... Everyone is capable of good. Look, you, you know, when you mentioned before I came here that you had autism or Asperger's, right? Asperger's, Like, yeah. you know, people say, I can't be vegan because I have autism. I'm like, what? what kind of bullshit is that? Mm -hmm. I can't be vegan because I'm in a wheelchair. What? I can't be vegan because I have an eating disorder. So? How is the... 
How is the, it's the animal's problem that you have an eating disorder. Just fucking get a vegan doctor. I don't get it, right? Okay. Again, being vegan is doing your best. Right. If for some reason you really, really can't eat whatever it is, just do your best. Mm -hmm. Are you doing your best to not be an asshole to the animals? After no. I leave here, right. will you do your best to not be an asshole? Will you be vegan fantastic and make some efforts? Then, no, you're not a sociopath and then you're not a bad guy. You're just a guy on, an, on, an, on a journey to try to do better. I'm just intellectually constipated currently. I do always want to do better by the way, just in general, and like... Well, prove it, okay? Prove it to me after I leave here. Okay. Communicate with me on a regular basis when you do something good. And don't just take pictures on your site of you with a gun and you with fondling nipples and freaking whatever kind of bizarre... That was you. I was looking that at That was them. you, all right? I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't fondle nipples. All right. And just so everyone knows, right? That prop was over on the floor somewhere. I brought it to the counter. I was using it. I brought this to the counter because I thought this is going to be an interesting image. And if they have an interesting image, it's going to draw attention to veganism. And you guys are all going to watch Dominion because I looked at those boobs. It's all part of mm -hmm. like me trying to find something that people will latch onto. I don't know. Okay. I mean, if this is, if this, I feel like this is not going to have a, I feel like this video in general will have a net positive outcome, in my opinion. I hope so. Yeah. I, I always try to just be, you know, entertaining or whatever and not try to scam my audience or just do overtly bad. I probably do too much selfish stuff, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, I'm getting better. Well, I, you know, I never you stop know, like, learning. Like I said, I hope so. And the main, but see, the problem is if you say, oh, I'm just an asshole and you're going to eat me. Like, you're basically teaching all the teenagers out mm -hmm. there that it's okay to be like Caleb. And they're going to start sending me. All these different pictures of them eating animals, like I haven't seen a million. They do that. So, like that is times. that is crazy that people do that. Like, can you just tell them? Can you just do me a favor and just not take it? Okay, you know what? You did a video recently. We all holding peanut butter jars, and you were like doing this to it. Okay, yeah. do more of that. That was a while ago. Okay, well I don't know. I just it was see peanut stuff. butter Friday, right? It, what, right, that's right. Okay, whatever you're doing, I'm just I'm just saying, do whatever you want with peanut butter. Do okay. whatever you want. You want to put some apples in your boot? Whatever I want. Want to put some apples in your boot? You want to do whatever with fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes? Fine. Yeah. Please, I'm asking you as a favor. Mm -hmm. Do not glorify the meat that you're eating or just draw attention to the positive. Please. Okay. That's fair. That's completely, I, there's nothing wrong with what you just said. That I. Well, then, you know what? You're like the first person who's agreed to that. Because that's what I asked to call me Chris. That's what I asked of Sniper Wolf and of Gordon yeah. Ramsay. And it's so easy to do. Just don't be a fucking prick. Don't be an idiot. Don't be a bitch. So if just I, be nice. Be vegan fantastic. So, just help us. What if, so, okay. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying, though. I see what you're saying. I was going to propose a, yeah, that, that's, that's, I understand what you're saying. It makes sense.